Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about candlestick patterns, or well, in this series of videos, should I say candlestick patterns? In this particular video, we're talking about the three white soldiers patterns. We've covered the three black crows pattern, which is a bullish to bearish pattern. This is completely the same, but opposite. Let's have a look at the candlesticks and let's have a look at how it works. So we've got a downtrend here. And at the end of the downtrend, we see these three candles. We see number one here, a long candle with a pretty short tail and wick. A second candle here, again, pretty short tail and wick. A third candle here, Again, a pretty short tail and wick. So what are the attributes of those three candles that make it three white soldiers? And by the way, I'm sure there are other names for this. We talked about in the previous video, go and check it out, black crows, I was calling them ravens. You know what, who cares? Does it really matter? It doesn't matter. But if you're looking at the textbook, this seems to be the most popular thing, three, three white soldiers. So let's look at the attributes of the candles. So we've got candle one here, candle two and candle three. All three of them have to have a long body with a short tail and a short wick. You don't want to have any kind of reversal. You really want to see intraday, from an intraday perspective, there's your open and there's your close, right? It's a high to low. You may have had some action sort of at the close or the open that's gone maybe a little bit above, giving you that tail and wick. But generally speaking, you want the intraday trend to be high to low. That's giving you your solid green candle. Uh, if you're using you know, a normal charting package or you're using a uh, different charting package, it's gonna be white. The point is it's high to low. Close is above the open. That's the key factor to that. Now. Additionally, what you need to see in candles two and candles three are these things. Candles two, you have to see for it to be official. Now, I know the real world guys, things aren't always looking as nice and as sweet as they do in the textbooks, but if we run the official line and then we can decide how far from the official line you still think it's a valid trade. That's the kind of the way that I tend to approach uh, candlestick patterns or general patterns, uh, just in, in general to say general too many times. So the second candle is we have the open has to be um, it has to be above the prior day's open. We don't want to have it down here. That, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And it's, it has to be also below the prior day's close. And that sounds, seems like counterintuitive, but this is for this specific pattern. Obviously, if we've got a close above, then that's a different thing altogether. That is very, very bullish, and we understand that and respect that. But for this pattern, we want to see on the official uh, line is that we open in the kind of the middle of the prior range. So day two, um, let's redraw that intraday. So this is this is kind of the intraday look of how these candles would be. So if we've got day one here, we've gone from uh, low to high and that's day one. And then day two, we've gone from low to high again. And then from day three, we've gone from low to high again. Appreciate you'd have a little bit more action to the downside and the upside, but broadly speaking, you know, that's what these candles are representing. So they are saying, hey, day one, good, strong intraday trend off the lows. Again, remembering that it was so important to see where you put this in perspective of what's happened before, not just looking at that solely and saying, well, I've got three black uh, crows or I've got three white soldiers. What's the price done beforehand? If it's been in a downtrend and now we're pushing back up with this pattern, bit more interesting. So from low to high day one, day two, what happens is you get this gap lower. Sellers then think, ah, you know what? That was just a little bounce up. And if we kind of put the uh, block it off a little bit here with the iPad, let me just see if you can see that. That's what you'd see on day one, which really just looks like a pullback. Yeah. If you were bearish and you saw that, or if you were bullish, you wouldn't be too excited. So you need to kind of see day two. So day two is when you get the gap down, Sellers think, yeah, this is great. Uh, we're just going to push to lows. They get denied. Buyers still think it's value, perceiving that yesterday was value and this is a good time to be buying it. They then buy there, causing it to not only fill that gap, but to close at highs. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful from perspective of messing up all the sellers who think it's going to the downside. So you're also triggering stops as well for these kind of people who have got stops above the high. Then day three, you get the same thing. Gap lower, people still think it's a pullback. It then closes from low to high. The psychology of it is great because you're getting intraday confirmation that the, the, the demand is outstripping the supply. 
And the overnight gap is still showing you that the sellers haven't given up yet. It's not like it's a runaway complete reversal. Sellers have not given up yet, but they are getting overpowered during the day. So how would we trade it from a trading perspective? Now, uh, I'm a little bit more aggressive with my approach. And as I've said before in videos, this, I, I would do this, but I will end up getting stopped out more often, but it makes up for the fact that I make more in my trades and I'm a little bit more aggressive intraday, trading it from an intraday basis. Obviously day one is just something you kind of marking it, saying, listen, we've got a downtrend, we've got day one move. Mm, I'm interested, but I'm not that excited yet because at the moment it's just a little pullback. The second day we get the gap lower, you're looking, you're watching intently. As we start to move up, then you can say, hey, we could now be putting in those three white soldiers. Do I want to take it on a break of there? Do I want to take it on the close looking for three? Or do I want to take the official line, which is we wait for the third one and then we go long here and our stop is here under the low of the, of the initial pattern. So around here, so there's your long here and there's your stop here. So that's perfect from a swing trading perspective. If you've been a downtrend for a long time, you now think that this market, this stock, whatever it may be, commodity is in a, due a bull run or due a decent run. Three days is nothing for the confirmation. There's your risk, very quantified, very systematic. You can do it. If you want to be a bit earlier on it, then possibly taking it on kind of day two or three as you break through the gap level, the fill, the gap fill, taking it from that. Or even if you're really aggressive saying, listen, We've started to push off there. I'm watching on an intraday chart, a really tiny intraday chart. Uh, sorry, tiny as in low time frame. I'm going to put my stop up there and I'm going to look for that pattern to, 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 to kind of continue. Now, except people probably, you guys might be screaming and going, no, you can't do that. It's not the official way of doing it. Yeah, I know. I know that you have to wait for the pattern to complete. And if you second guess it, that can get you in trouble. Fully accept that. Fully appreciate that. Just putting some ideas out there, throwing some ideas out there on potentially how you can do it. We know the official line is you're buying there and you're probably going to have your stop under there. I'm guessing that's where they say you put your stop. It makes sense, doesn't it, from a logical perspective. Um, the official line is that you wait for that. But if you can sometimes if you can front run it a bit yes you're going to get stopped out more often but you might get a little bit of a head start into that. anyway guys that's pretty much it for the three white soldiers pattern let me know in the comments below if you agree with the way that i've approached this let me know if you use this pattern or if you've got your own little twist on it your own little take on it your own little view of how it works for you or how you've been implementing your own trading i love to hear new ideas and new strategies and new approaches so stick them in the comments below if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already to the channel, please do so because we've got loads more candlestick patterns, technical analysis, psychology, strategies, setups, discipline, all that good stuff to make you hopefully a more profitable trader. Take care, guys. Speak to you soon. See you in the next video.